So before we get started, let me start off by saying this because I get reminders in both a positive and a negative way. So I really, really, really appreciate y'all. We know on here that sometimes the conversations that we have, we, we can touch on some stuff that is really are, are really sensitive topics, especially for Ravens fans, whether it's about this, that, whatever it may be. But I always and will forever appreciate the people that can have respectful conversations, regardless if they agree or they disagree, whatever their stance on is on whatever topic we talk about. I always and will forever always appreciate the people that always keep it respectful. Oftentimes, people will having a conversation, we're talking about this, that, and the third, whatever it may be. And there are some people that just because they disagree with what you say, they get disrespectful. And it, in my opinion, it's just my opinion. I don't think it should ever come to that. This team, keep it clean. This is a safe space for everybody. It's a safe space for everybody. That was one of our biggest goals when we started this channel, especially when we started question from subscribers. For people to ask normal questions, for people to ask crazy questions, for people to ask these questions that really make you think and wonder and whatnot, for people to just ask whatever it may be about the team, about whatever. And this be a safe space for them to have their questions heard and we talk about it respectfully. I appreciate y'all so much so without further ado let's get into this first question from my guy shout out to my guy kevin he said what's going on man we speak offline but i think this may be my first question from subscriber this is a doozy and yeah we do talk offline all the time uh kevin and his family his kids they nothing but nice man they just amazing family man i appreciate y'all everything that y'all have done for me for my family how nice y'all have been how welcoming y'all have been Think every every time we go up there, we end up linking up. Whether it's at the like this past season, it was at the uh, the um, uh, what are those things called the training camp. Um, last year was the open practice. Was it the year before last open practice? I, I forget. But either way, man, I appreciate you and your whole family. I will never forget. I remember uh, our first open practice. Uh, we had got there a little bit late because you know we all be always be running on CBT time. Um, but his family. They held it down. They 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 held a spot for me in line in the front of the line too. I was like, oh, I feel like a VIP, baby. But they they held it down for me. Um, and, and they just they they looked out ever since, man. They always been willing to help. Uh, especially when it came to like the flag football event and stuff. And we'll see what happens with that in the future. Um, but yeah, man, I I really appreciate you and your entire family. So. He said, uh, after watching some of the premier QB and wide receiver compo combos, and one thing that I noticed is that they benefit often from the 50-50 balls and one-on-ones. Ooh, it could be a, a small adjustment that could make a big difference in Ravens offense. He said, this year in particular, Lamar has not been attempting those 50-50 balls too often, and we already know about the overthrown ball, so maybe he just might be second-guessing himself. You think so? I think that could be it. He's second guessing himself or second guessing his receiver, second guessing if they'll make the play on it or not. Second guessing in football is very dangerous, if that's the case. Second guessing is dangerous on offense, on defense, on in, in any position that you play in. Second guessing is danger, dangerous. Um, for a quarterback, if they second guess, they could hesitate and be like, ah, well, and then they may throw the ball late, it could result in an interception. Um, for a defensive player, Oh, and I feel the worst for them because they second guess, like especially defensive linemen, pass rushers and whatnot, linebackers, anybody who's going for the quarterback. If you going, you getting close, 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 and he got, he still got the ball in his hands, he could throw it away at any given second. And you could try to pull up, but if you second guess, you could end up hurting yourself more than you would have ended up hurting him. Or not even hurting him, but you could end up hurting yourself or hurting both of y'all, really. Just from second guessing, because you got to pull up, you got to wonder, man, if I tackle him like this, or if I hit him like this, is it going to be a penalty? Is it going to cost my team field position? Is it going to cost them 15 yards and give up a first down? It's like, it, it, it's so dangerous to second guess in football for so many different reasons. But anyway, he said, uh, we were excited for Duvernay for the contested catches early this season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Um, I think it was against the Jets, that touchdown. But Duvernay, like, had the the least amount of separation, something like that, for a touchdown at that time this year. 
I don't know if that changed, but yeah, that, that corner was draped all over him. Lamar threw it up, put it up for Duvernay. He got it. Uh, he said, we have faith in Prochet when he made that contested catch. You talking about this year? You talking about preseason from last year? Uh, but Prochet, I mean, I, you said we, got, we have faith in Prochet when he made that contested catch. I don't even know if the Ravens have faith in Prochet, though, because when you think about it, I don't think they do. Um, but anyway, continuing, he said, same for Shamar Bridges, even though the Ravens won't use him. Oh, Shamar Bridges could be another nice uh, little change for the Ravens because simply because of where their wide receiver room is at right now. Um, and what I mean when I say that is just um, it's a it's a lot of little guys. And Demarcus Robinson, he like well, he like six one, six two, I think. So he the tallest one out of the bunch. But um, you get a Shamar Bridges out there, you get a six four guy out there, that might entice you more to be like, oh, you know what? Let, let me throw this jump ball. Let me let me see what he got. Let me see what he got. And you, you mentioned the, the jump balls earlier, the 50-50 balls, the jump balls. I, I really think that could be something, a small fix that could take this Ravens offense a long way for the rest of the season and beyond. I mean, it's, it's never really been um, a big part of their game um, recently. Uh, it just hasn't. But anyway, he said, with all that being said, do you think our wide receivers get a bad rep because of these lack of opportunities? Um partially yes but i think it's also deeper than that i just think it's the scheme as a whole the scheme um raven scheme i mean, not even a scheme their philosophy as a whole uh just has never really brought the, the most out of wide receivers like that and that, that's nothing new it's, it's, it's old news um so I, I just think changes to that changes to the way they use their guys changes to um the type of passes that they like again like the, the the fade routes that's something that they don't be doing they don't be doing Fade routes, the jump balls, and stuff like stuff like you mentioned. I think that could just, I think it could go a, a really, really long way. And I know the the season is, it ain't that much time left. Um, Tyler Huntley, we don't know how much longer he's gonna be starting for. And I mean, even if he starts this week, we'll see. Um, but whether it's Tyler Huntley, when Lamar Jackson comes back, when it's him, um, those jump balls, they they could go a long way. But in order to those jump balls for, for them to be successful. You got to have trust. You got to have trust. And in order for, to have trust, you got to build trust. In order to build trust, you got to give people an opportunity for them to gain your trust. And for you to gain theirs as well. Um, so you can start off small and, and just work your way. But, I mean, time is limited now. Time is limited now. And, and this is one of the biggest reasons for me why I talked about throughout this season, why I just wanted there to be more emphasis on the passing game. Because come playoff time, Hey, teams, they, they, you know, Ravens, like, Ravens can run the ball, as we know. And now, with Ronnie Stanley back, oof, woo. Ravens can really run that ball, which is a beautiful thing. Um, but I just want them to be prepared because playoffs is around the corner, y'all. Playoffs are around, they are literally right around the corner. And I just want this team to be as prepared as they possibly can be um, for when it's time. When teams be like, hey, oh, JK, oh, Gus Edwards. No, y'all not going off with them. Y'all going to have to beat us another way. And it's going to be important for the Ravens to be ready. It's going to be so important for the Ravens to be ready. And we want them to be ready, man, because we, we, we want them to have that ultimate success, man. Oh, it would be really nice if they make it happen. But we, we just want them to have that ultimate success, and we want them to be – because uh, a lot of times in playoffs, they, they've lost for so many different reasons, but a lot of times it's been, just been a lack of preparation. It's been a lack of preparation. Um, so it's been a lack of preparation – by players, it's been lack of preparation. By coaching staff, it's just been a lack of preparation as a whole. Um, and when you're not prepared, that's not a recipe for success. So, yeah, if Ravens, they, hey, it's it's not it's never too late to to change stuff for the better. It's never too late to make adjustments in your life that can improve your life, your quality of life, and whatnot. It's the same way with football. It's never too late to make adjustments to make little fixes here and there. That could take you a long way. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You too, team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right engraving. Right engraving. So team keep it clean, welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs 
and to be a part of it all that stuff is down below in the description i love y'all let's get into this next question that came from my guy deandre he said lamar's old weapon hello engraven hope all is well in the sunshine state i just had a question that i've been wondering about a big topic that we've all been worrying about is the wide receiver room and the ravens ultimately getting lamar a true number one receiver we all know hollywood was lamar's number one and we all know that he didn't like the scheme and roman's play calling with that being said my question is do you see a difference in how we use hollywood and how the cardinals are using him do you feel he fits their scheme better uh, than our scheme as well as especially with the cardinals struggling this season I don't know. I don't know. Reason I say I don't know is because I haven't just I haven't been sitting there and just really been watching Cardinals like that. Like if they're on TV, then I'll catch them. But I, I don't I haven't gone out of my way to be like, all right, let me catch this Cardinals game. Like if they on like prime time or something when they have been a couple of times, then I, I, I'll watch some of it. Actually, you know what? I just watched a little bit of the game that came on last night. I'm recording this on Tuesday, by the way. I watched a little bit of the, the, the Cardinals Patriots game last night. Didn't watch mo most of it at all. Um, so I, I watch them sometimes, but sometimes I just don't. Um, but with Hollywood, it's, it's tricky. It's really tricky to say because going into the Cardinals season, I was like, all right, they got DeAndre Hopkins, they got Hollywood, they got Rondell Moore. I think they still got A.J. Green. Um, then later on, they end up getting Robbie Anderson. But DeAndre Hopkins, he got suspended. Uh, then when he got off of suspension, Hollywood had got hurt. He got put on I.E.R. So, and then Kyler Murray, now he's hurt, and they, they just had all these injuries and whatnot, and the injuries just messed up everything that they possibly can. I, I mean, we Ravens fans, we know from plenty of experience. So I, I, I can't really say if he fits better in their scheme or fits better in our scheme. Um, I, I think that he went there with high hopes and high expectations, and I, I had high hopes and expectations for him over there too, uh, just cause simply what was around them, but... Injuries just it, it just messed everything up for them as we know from experience. So I, I can't say whether he's a better fit with their scheme or with the Ravens scheme or whatnot. Uh, so I just, I just don't know. Next question came from T. Gillard. He said, "What's up, Engraven? Hope you and the family are doing well." Here I come with another OBJ question. With the cow, I said question. I just said question. Question is what I meant. Let's <laughs> see. He said, with the Cowboys leaking OBJ's injury status, then ducking out of the race for OBJ, would it make sense for the Ravens to seriously make a push for OBJ now, knowing that he won't be ready to play for another four weeks? I personally would love this move. I don't think it would help us much for the season. However, I feel like it's a good opportunity to lock up a proven number one receiver for the next few years at a good price. You know how much Ravens love a discount. I also see it as an opportunity for management to show Lamar that they're trying to put more talent around him. Is this a no brainer or am I missing something here? Thanks for providing us with your amazing content. And like the. <laughs> I appreciate that by the way He said uh, And like Jerry Jones is In the race for OBJ I'm out um, With Odell Beckham Jr I, I don't really necessarily think It's a no brainer It'd be cool I, I don't think it's a move That would really push the Ravens Over the top um, A healthy OBJ is, is nice He's nice But you don't see it too often OBJ has dealt with a lot of of injuries i don't think this would be the move that would really show lamar hey all right there you go we're really trying to put talent around you um odell beckham jr he's tricky man he's like mm, i don't want to say he's like sammy watkins he's not like sammy watkins he's more explosive than sammy watkins but he is with the similarities just the injuries because where these guys they have all this crazy potential. And they can make plays. You know what they can do. But the injuries just derail everything. And with OBJ, I mean, I know he they said that the first ACL surgery he got wasn't a good one. So he got this one, cleaned it up to fix what the problems were from the first one. I don't really think it's necessarily a no-brainer. I mean, it couldn't hurt. It could not hurt at all if the Ravens got OBJ. Um, but I just, I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Um, I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't mind it. And to have him for the playoffs, even if he, man, I wish we had Bateman still. Mm. But even for Odell Beckham Jr., I mean, his presence alone, it will command attention. Um, but I wonder how the Ravens would use him. I wonder if he'd be like a, uh, the Deshaun Jackson, where they got have him out there for like 10 plays, 10, 12 plays, something like that, and have three designed for him. Um, or I wonder, because I, I just, I don't see him being a full goal, even in the playoffs this year, whoever he plays for. I don't see him being a full goal. I don't see him really having the, the Odell Beckham Jr. impact that he would if he was fully healthy. Um, but hey, we'll see. We'll see soon. Um, so I, I wouldn't mind if they signed him. 
Um, but I just, I would wonder how effective he would really be. Next question came from my guy, Mike Reed. He said, Engraven here. It's Mike, Ken A. Reed. Uh, been a while for me sending a question, but that hasn't kept me from watching. Hope all is well with you and the fam. Appreciate you, man. Uh, with Greg Roman in the last year of his contract, who would you want as the OC to be uh, for Lamar next year? I think the Ravens will pay Lamar. It's hard to find that guy at quarterback. We're not in rebuild mode. Only thing we're lacking is a true number one wide receiver. Uh, what do you think about Bobby Petrino, Lamar's old college coach, as the offensive coordinator? Mm. I, I don't think that he would. Um, I don't think that Harbaugh would hire him. I think he would. He has uh, too much. Um, too much name too much game to his name if if that makes sense i just feel like he has too much uh not too much person too much um what's y'all know what i'm trying to say like if somebody they like they already known out here they they established they got a resume that speaks for itself i, I just i feel like he would have too much what's i don't know what the phrase or word i'm looking for but i know there's gonna be some of y'all that understand what i'm trying to say so I don't think that they would bring Bobby Petrino on. As much, I know he got experience with him, but I, I don't think they would bring him on. Um, as an offensive coordinator, because I, you know, I, I would say like Eric Bieniemy, but Eric Bieniemy ain't gonna take no no uh, horizontal. What's the word? No, where you don't, um, where you're not elevated by a job. You just take a, a position that's literally the same thing. I can't. I cannot think right now. This, uh, my mind is just all messed up. I cannot think right now. Um, but who would I? Uh, I would want somebody who, because I know Harbaugh gives his coordinators. He's like, "Hey, y'all do what y'all do. I'm the head coach, but y'all go do your thing." I would really love uh, if the Ravens hired somebody who wasn't a family friend. Um, but somebody who they would really like do their thing and really like would put the emphasis, continue the, the continued emphasis on the run game, but also in continued emphasis on the passing game, but really open this offense up. And before that, the Ravens would really have to allow them that that would have to be a little adjustment in the philosophy. Um, cause that's the biggest thing. That's really the biggest thing. The, it's, it's the philosophy. That's the biggest thing. Um, so if Ravens are willing to do that, then whoever they bring in, like it gotta be somebody who's, if Ravens can change their vision, then the offensive coordinator, not that it won't matter because it obviously matters the offensive coordinator, but them changing their vision on how they do stuff, that, that's the first step. That's really the first step. Um, whoever they bring in the offensive co coordinator right now, I don't think it's nothing much is really going to change, but the Ravens vision has to change in order for there to be uh, a real change, uh, no matter who the offensive coordinator is, uh, whether it's Greg Roman or somebody else. It, it starts with the Ravens, first and foremost. Patrick Queen ascending. Next question came from my guy, Andre. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and your family are doing great. Here's a question from Portugal. With the addition of Roquan Smith, uh, Patrick Queen is now showing uh, he what he can do. But I'm concerned if he keeps growing like this, should we pay them both? Do you think it's possible if this duo keeps playing like this? I don't think... Well, anything is possible, but I just I don't think they will both, especially Patrick Queen keep playing like this, and Roquan keep playing like that. Mm, I, I just I don't think they will pay two linebackers that top linebacker money. Ooh man, cause Patrick Queen been doing his thing now, baby. He been doing his thing. So um, Patrick Queen, you know, like hey, it's business. Patrick Queen gonna want his money, man. He gonna want to get paid, man. They ain't, they ain't playing in the NFL for free, so. I mean, I would love for the Ravens to keep them together, but I, I, I just, I, I don't see it happening. But anyway, he said, thanks for the awesome content and effort you put on this channel uh, to get Ravens flock entertained. Love from Portuguese. Hashtag Ravens around the world. Appreciate you, Andre. Add backers. Next question came from my guy, Dez. He said, long time supporter and subscriber. Appreciate that. Uh, with the offseason fastly approaching, hopefully in February for us. Yes, hopefully. Uh, it's time we start having the heartbreaking conversation that we could possibly lose Lamar. I hope not. But if so, are you riding with Snoop or looking in free agency or the draft? I think it would be both Snoop and uh, the draft. I think it would be a mix of both. And I think they would have like an open competition uh, between them two. I think they're comfortable. They'll be comfortable with uh, riding with Snoop. He'd be a cheaper option. He's somebody that's already here. Um, and while they uh, – but I think they would look at him sort of as a bridge, um, as a bridge from Lamar – to Snoop to whoever the next guy is going to be that they end up drafting. 
Uh, he said also, with the money being freed up, are you focusing on keeping Roquan and PQ together? Their chemistry is crazy. Even Steelers fans was complimenting them. LOL. Well, y'all y'all know how I feel about that. Hopefully they can, but I just think business will be business. Next question came from my guy Juan. He said, if you had complete power of the Ravens, let's pretend for a moment that you were the owner and GM of the Baltimore Ravens and had complete control and power of the organization. What would you do? Number one, what changes would you make at head coach, offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, if any at all? If so, who would you hire at the three positions? Um, like I told y'all before, I would have a sit down with Harbaugh and after the season, Hopefully it will be after we won a Super Bowl. I say, oh, okay, Harbaugh, cool, but we got to make some changes. But um, if uh if it wasn't after a Super Bowl, I say, all right, Harbaugh, cool, thanks for everything. But look, I know these players love you. They absolutely love you. I love you. You're a great person. Um, but the direction of this team has got to change. It's got to change definitely because I, I don't feel like this team is being taken as far, and I don't feel like this team is as as is as powerful as they can possibly. B, are you willing to make those changes? If he was, cool. If he wasn't, then I would tell him, thank you for everything that you've done for this organization since 2008. But I, th I think we're going to go in a different direction. Um, now, if if Harwell stayed okay, cool, and change. If he didn't, okay, I'll probably try like Eric B. Enemy. I'll go try him. Um, he been floating around with the, the Chiefs for the longest as that OC. I know Andy Reid do a lot of the the, the play calling and stuff too. But Eric Bieniemy is part of that. Um, so, and I like what they do with the offense. I would, um, I could look for somebody from the uh, the Kyle Shanahan tree. Um, just the way that their offense is designed, with how it just it, it maximizes that yak, and it makes playmakers out of like everybody. Everybody's a playmaker with the 49ers. and then the Dolphins. They do a lot of that same stuff. Obviously, Mike McDaniel coming from uh, over there. Um, and so that would and that could determine the offensive coordinator too, depending on um who we hire a head coach. As far as defensive coordinator, uh Mike McDonald, I uh I think it would depend on the playmakers that we had, but I I would probably ask him to stay. Uh usually when you do a new regime though, uh usually previous coaches they end up going too. Um so I I would leave it up to him. I would say, Hey, you do you wanna stay? Do you are you but uh, oh, another option for head coach could possibly be uh D'Amico Ryan's. D'Amico Ryan was the 49ers defensive coordinator. That could be another one, too. And then um, just have somebody really good uh, run the offense. And, yeah, so that, that could be another one right there. I forgot about him. Um, he also said, what play style, philosophy, or identity would you install in this organization moving forward? Um, I would just the, – the play style, philosophy would be stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. And what that would mean would just to be – to open the offense uh, up as much as possible – and I would just really want whoever I brought in, make sure you make everybody who we feature a weapon. And I will want consistency. Hey, you see this guy's hot? All right, let's find more ways to get him involved. Let's also find ways to switch it up. Let's find ways to just to still run the ball, but also be effective passing the ball as well. Um, we're going to have some games where the run is taken away. All right, we'll be ready for it. We're going to have some games where the pass is taken away. Okay, we'll be ready for it. Just be ready for it. Be ready in all situations and be able to adjust. Be willing to adjust. Do not be stuck in your ways because we all got things that we need to improve on. We all got things that we can adjust. Don't be stuck in your ways. Do not be no cocky coach. You're not better than anybody that works here. Nobody that works here is better than you. We all on the same level. Don't forget that. So be willing to make changes and be willing to step your game up. Um, what would be your priorities within uh, your first few months of power? Um, just really letting everybody know, like, hey, we we not this ain't about being complacent. This not just this ain't about being uh, competitive. This is about really being contenders. Uh, I want to win. I want to win Super Bowls. And I'm not just saying that. I wouldn't just be saying that as an owner slash G. I would actually really mean that. Uh, yeah, because, hey, if I'm in business, if we make it, if we competitive and people come into the games, they're having fun. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That's great. But I want to win. I want to win, 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 win. I will let them know that. Um, he said, would you or would you not resign Lamar Jackson to his demands? I will certainly resign Lamar Jackson. I would do everything in my power to retain Lamar Jackson, because I know uh, Lamar Jackson gives us a much, 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 much better chance of winning with him rather than without him. And he is not the easiest player to replace. He certainly wouldn't be. Um, so I'll do everything in my power to keep him. Um, 
He also said, what else would you personally add to make this team a Super Bowl contender? Because with a terrible red zone offense, a reputation for injuries, bad coaching, especially in our recent first round playoff exits, we are currently Super Bowl pretenders. Um, as far as uh, the red zone offense, I mean, that part of that is that's play calling uh, and execution, too. But it starts with the coaching. I would just have to hold my guys accountable. They, they would definitely be held accountable for everything. Um, as far as injuries, yeah, that's, that's, that's the staff right there. Um, sometimes some stuff just happens, but with the Ravens, it seems like a lot of stuff just always happens. So that would definitely get a thorough looking at and, and research because I just I would want to do everything in my power to just avoid it. And, and you can't avoid every single injury. It ain't going to happen. Stuff's still going to happen. But I would just do everything in my power to ensure like, hey, we doing the best we can injury wise and we being smart about stuff. Um, and bad coaching again. That's that. That's coaching. So that would be on me to make sure I had the right guys, uh, and that the, they were guys that were always willing to make adjustments and make fixes and changes to their games. They may have a great resume. They may have great things that they've done in the past. But I would want to make sure that they were still willing to do great things in the future if something that they do and have done in the past isn't working. This question came from my guy Flair Nowinski. He said, "I uh, hope all is well with you and yours. Also, shout out to the rest of the team. Keep it clean, gang, aka pacemaker gang." Yeah, you know the Ravens be having us stressing. He said, have you noticed the Ravens have a great eye for talent at quarterback? Well, for the majority of the time. I know we had Flacco and McNair for a long stint, but even the QBs behind them were pretty good, just like now Lamar and Snoop. Oh, like uh, Kyle Bowler and Trent Dilfer. And you know, anyway, he said, uh, it's kind of funny that it's kind of funny because they can't draft the old lineman or wide receiver to save their life. Old lineman, uh, Ben Powers, it took him a little bit. But he, he seemed to be doing better now. Um, Ryan Stanley, he, he's been good. It's just been the injuries with him. Um, hmm. Wow. Well, O-line has been, well, Tyler Linderbaum, he's he been good his first year. So he, he's been very impactful right away. Um, he doesn't have some hiccups here and there. He's a rookie, though. But he's he been pretty good overall. Um, so I wouldn't say they can't draft the O-lineman. Uh, but wide receiver, that's, <sighs> wide receiver is a mix of, Drafting this mix of scouting, this mix of development, this mix of like so much different things. But anyway, he said, uh, also, they have a great eye for running backs and tight ends. Uh, never the sexy picks at those positions, but also over the years, they have all panned out for the majority. Yeah, usually pretty much. Um, as far as especially running backs, uh, well, when they draft who they draft, they drafted Kenneth Dixon when he was healthy, he was straight. J.K. Dobbins when he's healthy, he's straight. Uh, Gus Edwards was undrafted. Um, Alex Collins, they traded from him for they got him from Seahawks practice squad. Justin Forsett, free agent. Ray Rice, second round pick from Rutgers. He was phenomenal, obviously. Um, they got Terrence West as a free agent, I believe. Um, who else? Bernard Pierce, they drafted him. I want to say in the third round. Um, so he he was straight, he was solid. Ricky Williams, obviously free agent. Willis McGay, he trade from the Bills. Or was he a free agent? I forget. Um, well, yeah, anyway, I don't want to spend too much time on But uh, he said, um, even picking up free agents at those positions. I, I know it's philosophy, but also past that because they literally don't miss at those three positions and miss at the other two. Which brings me to my next thing. As far as Ravens fans, I understand everybody wants Lamar, but realistically, all the free agents everybody wanted were free agents for a reason. Uh, Fuller can't help uh, or, or Odell nor Julio. I mean, honestly, look what they are doing now. It's good to have more help, but to me, it's failure in my eyes. Imagine making a splash without, excuse me, imagine making a splash with having DK or D-Hop uh, and them drawing up a play to utilize them and send them on a post, and it's the same result as if they sent Duve on a post because Lamar has to run in three milliseconds. If g -Row does this with Duve and them, imagine the stupidity he would run with an elite wide receiver. Honestly, I think we are just stuck, bro. They rely on Superman too much. Our team is built around Superman. Mm, example, Josh Allen was very raw. I wouldn't say he's terrible, but the team wasn't built around him being Superman. So they invested in things that matter, like a good offensive line. They got a few good wide receivers, which go hand in hand. They do. That's true. To be honest, if they really had to rely on Allen, I don't know if he would even be talked about. But since we are built on bad foundation, our team just goes off of God-given talent at all positions instead of an actual good team. Oh, OK. I see what you're taking at. I'm glad I kept reading. Uh, he said, I'm not going to dig out McDonald like I do every single game. I'm just going to simply say that the cover two match was getting dog per usual. Same spot, same spot, same plays every game. I know, I know it got two picks, but that's just because Mitch Trubisky is bad. Let's be very honest here. 
But anyway, it was nice beating on a bunch of nothing, but we have tougher opponents ahead. You think Harbs is going to ride it out or let Lamar come back in early hopes to sabotage him even more? Now, I think, um, I mean, I would hope that they would, they would bring him back when he's healthy. Um, but I just, I just hope when they do bring him back that they can implement some of the same things they are doing now with the offense with him. Um, but anyway, we'll see. He said, it's funny, Snoop had all the same problems Lamar had getting flushed in the millisecond. They both always dart, uh, start to the right. They can't even make a read, which is alarming. But anyway, also getting the snap off. I know Tyler is doing good, but we also have to give him some blame for that issue because the same was happening with Brown. L- literally the exact same thing. Before I go, why don't they throw fades to Doof? I know this might sound very stupid, but bro, we all watch the game. Like, look at the majority, if not all of his receiving touchdown. He literally four feet in the air or in the corner of the end zone. Like, he quite possibly might be the answer. And like I am, every time I see the same play call on defense, picked apart every minute, uh, quarter, half, and game, I'm out. Also, he talked about Doof and they getting them opportunities too uh, with them fade routes, the jump balls, and whatnot. And that'd be nice. Well, yeah, you, you said a lot with this one. You said a whole lot with this one. Um, as far as the uh, going back to the free agent part, um, I, I think a, an elite wide receiver would make a difference. Um, the scheme is the biggest thing. That's 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 the biggest thing. We've done talked about that enough. Um, but uh, as far as like you mentioned with Josh Allen, yeah, uh, the the way that the Buffalo Bills built their team, um, they they built they invested in things that mattered. Uh, for the quarterback the most And that's, that's Yeah that's really good Now um, It's like You Sometimes depending on What areas you choose to address Then there are going to be some areas Where you can't address as much Bills They don't usually have a, a big running game They don't usually have a running game um, Ravens have a great running game uh, But it's been that passing game That's been like Oh what's going on there um, The Bills passing game Is wonderful uh, But their running game Is ooh. But they have a uh, they got a pretty good defense. Ravens got a, a good defense, um, but that's where those two differ. Um, who else? I mean, the Dolphins. The Dolphins. Their defense. Their defense is all right. Um, I know they're dealing with some injuries right now, but their defense is 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 good. Uh, their offense, though. Um, I know their offensive line. They were dealing with some injuries and the Chargers were. They were just abusing Tua sometimes, but. Then Tua's just missing too sometimes, but they got overall Tua's have been much better this year because they they got Tyreek Hill. They, they drafted Jalen Waddle, so that was nice. Um, and those those guys have just oh they have just Tyreek Hill has ascended to his game a lot because he already had Jalen Waddle, and I mean last year he was off and on when it came to playing. Um, but this year they they've ascended to his game a lot. Tyreek Hill has ascended Jalen Waddle's game a lot. Um, it just. It's made a big difference. And, I mean, we can go down the list of quarterbacks who games have been ascended from getting that elite guy. Like uh, Jalen Hurts is another one. Um, so, yeah, they, they, they do make a, a huge difference. Um, but, yeah, like, it's, it's a lot of it is about scheme, too. So, um, yeah, and you talked about your normal cover two match uh, with Mike McDonald defense. Um, but the dude, the, the fade routes, yeah, that would uh, – That'd be nice to just really to anybody, I, to Mark Andrews, even though he's going to get a lot of attention uh, in the end zone. But still, I mean, he's still good. If you can get a matchup one-on-one, give him a shot. DuVernay, crochet like my guy Kev mentioned earlier. Uh, Demarcus Robinson. Even though I, I don't, I wonder, like Demarcus Robinson, he has this uh, thing where he uh, he mistimes jumps. It's, it's weird. Um, so I don't know if to him would be the best idea to go with the fade route. Uh, but... Yeah, that's that, man. But with this question, yeah, you 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 done said a lot, like as usual. And last question on this episode came from my guy Manuel. He said the scam. That's G Rose offense. What's up, Engraven? After this, after save from the defense in the Steelers game, about time. I, I was looking up some interesting facts about G Rose offense, and in fact, the way G Rose offense is set up is not for running quarterbacks, quarterbacks nor dual threats. It's specifically designed for running backs and fullbacks, where you can be creating with the running. You can be creative with the running game through blocks, counter, jet sweeps. Shout out to Duvernay. Yet in the passing game, it lacks the most critical things for it to work. Route, speed, and talent at the wide receiver position. The tree route, uh, had the route tree it has is all short and mostly designed for tight ends because of their size and body type. They can take on linebackers easily and corners covering them. When you put a wide receiver in those positions, it always fails because they're not tight ends. They command speed and need intermediate routes to excel with Giro doesn't have in his playbook. And for the wide receiver to excel in this offense, it's only uh, blocking or go long, never another route. Uh, the short routes close fast as you can try to fake 
hand the ball off to your running back, making the speed, the key factor on this offense, which, no, honestly, we don't have anymore. Shout out to Hollywood and Bateman because no one plays at Lamar's feet, so Lamar gets frustrated that he has to slow down and wait for a play to develop. Um, Duvernay, got, he got some speed on him. Um, it ain't like Bateman and Hollywood, but he got some speed on him. Uh, other than that, Demarcus Robinson, he got some. It ain't like Bateman and Hollywood, but he got some. Uh, but he said when in college, he was perfect with quick plays and intermediate routes in that West Coast offense. But Hobbs had Giro and thought and said, no, nah, we'll use yes running back more than a quarterback. Uh, that 2019 was a showcase for Lamar uh, that he can run and pass. But it was just welcoming him to the NFL because we saw the fall in the passing game in that Titans playoff. A lack of repetition caused drop balls, lack of routes causing wide receivers not to get open, and it was the same thing in 2020. But what a coincidence that when T. Martin and Keith Williams showed up, we could pass the ball more effectively without a running game. Yet the Ravens don't want to admit their biggest mistake of all, and that's to continue to think that running the ball will get them another Super Bowl. Lamar needs a passing offense like Mahomes or Allen to showcase his passing ability, but there's one big problem. We have no one at wide receiver for that, and whose fault is that? Because they know that if Lamar puts big numbers, he'll command money, and Bashadi is cheaper on that front. He had no option but to pay Flacco when he won that Super Bowl because if he left like Dilfer, they were going to be trash because half of that defense was gone entering 2013. But back to the deception of this offense. If this type of offense benefits running quarterbacks, then why didn't Kaepernick, Tyrod Huntley, in his past game with Brown Jr., I uh, haven't produced the number of points Lamar produced in 2019 in each game as it should since it enhances your running ability. Why hasn't Giro or any other coach running this type of offense get a head coaching job in the NFL because they all know that the system is for only producing running yards and not passing yards. And once you shut down the run, it's game over because your wide receivers don't have the reps nor the talent to overcome this bad scheme. If Bashadi wants another trophy, he has to step up and tell EDC, either we change our offense now or we're one and done in the playoffs. Sorry if this was long, but I had to put it out there because I have no faith in this offense in the playoffs, not with Giro calling the plays, no hardball, allowing the play, them bad plays to happen and hindering Lamar's ability to go all out. Whew. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. That was a lot. 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 Wow. Anyway, I wasn't playing. Um, mm. So, uh, yeah, this this offense is what the offense is. Um, and we know that this is specializes in the run game and specializes in the tight ends and stuff. Not really specialized for the wide receivers, which uh, we all knew um, and know. Uh, but, yeah, hopefully um, I'm hoping for the best in the coming to playoffs. I understand the, the lack of trust moving forward, the lack of trust, especially in the playoffs. Um, but let's hope that. The, the the run game and the playoffs can go off. Um, but the passing game, like, they can just be good compliments to each other. They can feed off of each other in a positive way. You don't want to feed off of each other in a negative way. But they can feed off of each other in a positive way. Um, and, and they, because obviously n nothing, Giro ain't going nowhere this during the rest of the season. So um, just got to really hope for the best, man. Got to hope for the best and just hope that the Ravens just catch fire. That they catch fire and they just start... It's, it looks like offense that we ain't never seen before. And we like, whoa, where is this coming from? And they just go off. Now, um, with J.K. and Gus being back, that helps a lot. With Ronnie Stanley being back, it helps a lot. So we just, um, with the Ravens getting healthy, especially to getting their right guys healthy, it can help so much. It can help them be as strong as they're going to be. So you got Ronnie Stanley back. You got J.K. back. Even though he ain't 100%, you got him back. You got Gus. Uh, you just, I mean, the last piece they really waiting on uh, is Lamar. So, and something to think about too, especially with the running game. Um, if they were able to run the way that they ran um, last week without Lamar, just imagine how they can run with him. But the bigger thing is the passing game. The passing game, passing game, passing game, especially come playoff time. Because um, the defense, not really worried about the defense in the playoff, but they will be going against some of the better quarterbacks. So there's that worry there, especially pass defense. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see, but whew, wow, that, that was that was a lot. But you just you 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 want to see this offense as strong as they possibly can be, and we'll 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 never see the full strength of this offense for twenty twenty two because Rashad Bateman is out. Um, but we just want to see guys step up, and that's the players, that's the coaches, that's everybody. We want to see them all step up when it matters the most. Um, and like I said, with with the scheme and everything, the scheme is what it is. Um, we just gotta hope that the the Ravens can to 2012 49ers this thing, except they don't lose the Super Bowl. That they can get there and then they could just go crazy and they can be on the flip side this time. 
Uh, but you never know. You never know. I do think this is, again, this is Giro's last year, but will it be the Ravens' last year with the philosophy? That's that's the bigger question. Um, so for everything that you talked about, yeah, we won't really know till we know, and we won't find out really till this offseason. Yeah, this feels like a dream.